A Java servlet's going to have a life cycle that's going to be managed for us for the most part by the web container, just like many other different types of server side components. So initially there's going to be a create phase. That create phase is going to call an initialization step. And that initialization step is where the init method associated with my HTTP servlet is, is going to be called. So remember the init method is where all of the initial allocations required by the various executions and threaded executions of my servlet are going to be used. So if there are uh, things that need to be allocated, authentication that need to be received, those are the types of process that might be contained inside of the init method. Now once the init method has run successfully, then the servlet becomes available for service. Once it's available for service, of course, this is where I can begin to pass messages to it. So at this particular point in time, it'll be loaded into the instance pool and it's ready to accept message-based processing. So now the service method is going to be invoked. Now remember, the service method is a method that's inherited from our superclass. So unless I've overwritten it, then the service method is simply going to continue on down and pass control into either a do get or a do post method. So inside of my servlet itself, I'm going to have probably one of two entry points, or maybe both. One for get processing, the do get method. One for post processing, the do post method. So if I don't override the service method, then the request is automatically going to be filtered into my particular servlet in one of these two entry points. Now, once it's available for service, I can begin the process and start accessing uh, the uh, business logic aspects that are associated with my particular servlet, and I can basically go out and start accessing messages and doing the basic processing. Now, when I'm doing this, I might encounter some type of an error. So there may be a point in time where I'm uh, processing a particular request and an exception is going to be generated. And at that particular point in time, my particular application my particular servlet may become unavailable for service. So we would move from a avail available for service to an unavailable for service type of scenario. At this particular point in time, based on how I would handle this particular request, I could go back in and continue to process. It's all going to be dependent on exactly how my application is built to handle different types of error processing. If it does become unavailable for an extended period of time, then the destroy method might actually get called. Now remember, the destroy method is the process where I'm about to be deallocated or removed from the instance pool of the application server. If the destroy method does get called, then I'm going to be unloaded. So one of the roles of the web container now is simply to unload my servlet out of the instance pool to make way for somebody else and then we're basically placed in an unavailable for service type of scenario. In this particular case, if this is the scenario where we're actually unloaded, the next request that comes in is going to require the entire lifecycle process to begin anew. So once we become unloaded now, the servlet is no longer going to be available. So this entire process of creating the servlet, initializing it, making it available for service, pulling in the actual messages, passing control to the associated entry point, then essentially unloading it and destroying it out of the instance pool. All this processes, these functions, are the mainstay in the role of the web container.